Good evening, it's 8 p.m. on Thursday the 14th of March and this is the 36th of 53 consecutive five mile walks from the Gresford Disaster Memorial to the Miners Rescue and back again. The historical records, Gresford and after, a first-hand account of the Gresford disaster, provided by recovery worker Harry Jones, is a superb insight into the tragedy and what it took to make Gresford operational again. Yesterday, Jones's testimony allowed us to get some understanding of what the recovery teams were confronted with and the subsequent clean-up operation that would be needed. Today, we look at the attempt to recover as many of the men and boys as possible. One night during a short break from the recovery efforts, Harry Jones was resting at home when at 6pm a knocker came to his house with instructions that he was to report for duty at the colliery at 9.30pm the same night. The knocker did not know why. Upon arriving at the pit, Jones was informed by the agents that he would be the captain of a team that would descend down the Dennis section in a secret operation to recover the dead body of rescue man John Lewis of Kevin Ebay, who had been left in the return airway. It would be the first time Jones had been down the Dennis since the disaster, and he was astonished to find the conditions even worse than those he'd already witnessed in the Martin pit. However, while difficult to navigate, the roadway, somehow, was relatively intact and unscathed. Jones, who had seen John Lewis's body on the night of the disaster, carefully led his team to the body of John Lewis. And upon reaching him, Jones saw how the condition of the body was none the worse than it had been some six months earlier. Not a stone had fallen on him. He lay with his arm under his head and face downwards. His features, his hands, were without a blemish. On assessing the conditions they would need to return by, the team agreed to return for John Lewis once the way back had been further cleared and their oxygen and strength had been replenished. It would be a journey of profound importance, sacred, and every precaution would need to be taken. However, upon returning to the body a couple of days later, the team observed there'd been rock falls in the area and the pit roof had been disturbed. The risk was suddenly heightened and anxiety increased. Despite this, the doctor accompanying the rescuers carefully removed John Lewis's rescue apparatus and wrapped his body in cloth. John Lewis's body was respectfully placed on a stretcher and so began his journey home, back to his family and to his friends and to the place where he belonged. For John Lewis, now buried in Gwersfield Cemetery, the recovery team had done their job. But the task of recovering their comrades had only just begun. The rescue men were fiercely committed to fighting any conditions in their quest to rescue their comrades from unknown graves. They were intent on ensuring their comrades received a proper burial in a proper grave so they and their loved ones could go along and pay their deepest respects. As painful as burying a loved one is for the affected families, they're an important part of the grieving process. Funeral rituals allow us the physical comfort of being hugged or shaking hands or just sitting next to someone. They allow us to touch the coffin, to receive the social support a funeral reception gives and allow us to say goodbye in a way that a loved one would have wished for. Families and friends who, for whatever reason, are unable to bury their loved ones can experience more acute mental health issues and struggle to process their grief. The continuing recovery attempt in the Dennis section saw rescue teams struggle through 700 yards of dangerous roadway. But sadly, no other bodies were found. 
and the closer they got to where the bodies were believed to be, the more poisonous the air became. It must have pained them greatly to learn that any further attempts to recover any more bodies were to be abandoned. A decision taken by the mines inspectorate on the grounds that conditions in the Dennis section remain too dangerous for any recovery attempt. John Lewis would be the only man to come home. Harry Jones wrote that John Lewis's burial was one of the largest ever witnessed at Guersilt. All classes, all professions, the highest and the lowest in the district attended and paid a last tribute to our fellow comrade. What more could a man have done than to sacrifice his life in attempting to save others? The Dennis section was never reopened and the bodies of the remaining 254 victims would never come back home. This walk was dedicated to Evan H. Owens, Alex Palmer, Isaac Parry, Joseph Parry, and John E. Parry.